Welcome to this short session where I'd like to introduce you to uh, the Human Animal Bond Research Institute and the power of the human animal bond, as well as to share a downloadable tool with you that's available on Zoetis Pet Care Network that you'll be able to use with clients in your practice. So Zoetis recently partnered with Habri to conduct a global quantitative study. This is the largest survey of its kind, with nobody having before looked at the human animal bond in depth on, on an international level. We've now got really good country-specific data on the human animal bond. So as a research team, you know, in order to be able to measure the strength of the human animal bond, uh, we look to develop a scientifically validated measurement of the bond among pet owners. We called this measurement uh, the HAB score. And the HAB score, you know, was based on a theoretical framework of four dimensions where we looked at uh, attachment, we looked at humanization, we looked at commitment, and we looked at integration. There were 14 questions that the pet owners responded to spread across these uh, four dimensions. And when we took the responses to these 14 questions, you know, all together, we're able to plot a, a, a global human animal bond score of all the pet owners that were uh, were surveyed. The responses, you know, were not normally distributed. You're not looking at a normal bell curve with, you know, many of the pet owners being well into positive territory, you know, having a human animal bond score of around 57.4, out of a, a maximum of 70. Now for analytical purposes, we also divided the 18,000 cat and dog owners into thirds, you know, based on where they fell. So in other words, did they fall into a, a low bond tier, a mid bond tier, or a high bond tier? And we used tiers in order to analyze if pet owner behavior changed based on how strong their bond was with their pet. So let's dive into the impact of pets on pet owner health. And we know from previous research that many pet owners uh, in the United States would say that having a pet has impacted their health, whether it be physically or mentally, in a positive way. What we didn't expect to see was just how incredibly strong uh, this would be globally, with 88% of the pet owners surveyed stating that their pets positively impacted their mental or physical health. And when we asked them indirectly, we actually found that 98% of them reported at least one mental physical or uh, or social benefit. So with that, uh, let's actually take a look at the impact of the human animal bond on pet health. For dogs, we found a very clear correlation between the strength of the human animal bond and the propensity for pet owners to engage in preventive care. If we look at the willingness for pet owners to take their uh, dogs in for diagnostic screening, in other words, you know, blood, fecal, or urine tests, we found uh, you know, a 14% difference between those in the low bond tier compared to those in a high bond tier. So we found that this pattern also holds true for cat owners. You know, as an example, uh, cat owners in the highest bond tier were 18% more likely to take their cat for an annual veterinary checkup. Now, because we had such a large global sample, we could also do a deeper analysis than had ever been done before on actual veterinary care for specific conditions. What you're looking at here is the actual incidence rate for conditions, including things like hair loss, weight gain, and lameness, for example. As part of the survey, you know, we asked just these pet owners if they'd taken their pet to see a veterinarian for any of these conditions. And we found that pet owners were very much more likely to have seen a veterinarian across the board if they had a stronger bond. So looking at the slide of highly bonded dog owners, we found that those dog owners in the highest bond tier were, for example, 19% more likely to take their dog to see the veterinarian if they felt it was itching abnormally compared to those in a lower bond tier. Uh, for strongly bonded cat owners, the differences between bond tiers were sometimes even stronger. You know, a highly bonded cat owner, for example, was 25% more likely to take their cat to see their veterinarian for gum issues than those in the lower bond tier. Now, because we had such a large global sample, we could also do a deeper analysis than has ever been done before on actual veterinary care for specific conditions. And what you're looking at on this particular slide is the actual incidence rate for conditions, including things like you know, hair loss, weight gain, lameness, for an example. And as part of the survey, we asked just those pet owners who had reported some of these symptoms in their pets you know, to tell us whether or not they'd taken their pet to the veterinarian for those particular symptoms. We found that uh, dog owners were much more likely 
to see a, a, a veterinarian across the board if they had a stronger bond. You know, so as an example, if you want to, you know, look at the low bond tier versus the high bond tier, those pet owners uh, that reported that their dogs showed abnormal itching in the high bond tier were 19% more likely to take their dog to the vet than those in the low bond tier. For strongly bonded cats, the differences between the bond tiers were sometimes even larger. So, you know, highly bonded cat owners were, for example, 25% more likely to take their cat to, to see their veterinarian if they felt their cat had gum issues compared to those in the lower bond tier. So what we've been able to do with this data on Zoetis Pet Care Network is we've been able to create a human animal bond score tool for you to use with your clients and, and obviously as, as a veterinary team. Essentially, this Zoetis Pet Care Network uh, HAB score tool is a shortened version of the full HAB score that I touched on earlier in the presentation. Uh, and we built it by performing a statistically discriminant analysis using the full HAB score scale. We picked the top three variables uh, in, in order to create this tool. And we found that those top three variables based on three of the 14 questions were accurately able to predict the correct bond tier to a level of 72%. There's a downloadable version of this tool available for you to use on Zoetis Pet Care Network. Uh, there's a PDF that you can give to the pet owner prior to the appointment or at the appointment, and you can have them complete the, uh, the questions. They can then tally up their score, and, we'll, and essentially uh, that'll allow you to determine where they fit. You know, does the, does the, is the pet consider a family member, a companion, or a friend? And based on this particular category, on, on the category they fall in, you can then discuss with them the benefits of the human-animal bond, how it benefits them and their pet. There's also a guide with this downloadable PDF for you to review so that you can learn how to use the scoring system uh, in, in the best possible way, in addition to a variety of other tools that you can also download. So thank you for taking the time to review uh, the human-animal bond and the human-animal bond scoring tool with me.